Hi, my name is Andre, and we'll now talk about all things leadership. Over the next few episodes of the series, I will talk to you about 10 leadership theories that have shown up in various books over the course of our apparently long but actually short history. So yeah, pretty cool. In this episode, we'll talk about the great man theory. <clears throat> Not that kind of great. This kind of great. So, what is this theory about? Well, it goes back to the 1840s and a grumpy old chap by the name of Thomas Carlyle. Yep, turns out he was really grumpy all his life. His wife too. It seems that in their over 9,000 letters, they argued over half of the time, to the point where Samuel Butler, an iconoclast writer contemporary to Carlyle, stated that it was very good of God to let Carlyle and Mrs. Carlyle marry one another, and so make only two people miserable instead of four. Quite the love story, right? Anyways, in essence, the theory states that history was shaped by great men. Not perfect, but great. People of influence in their fields who took charge of the fate of their society and moved it forward towards progress. Yes, always forward, never backwards. To illustrate these points, Thomas Carlyle wrote a series of six lectures appropriately called On Heroes, Hero Worship and the Heroic in History. And here they are. The Hero as Divinity, i.e. Odin. The Hero as Prophet, there he talked about Muhammad and Islam. The Hero as Poet, where he talked about Dante and Shakespeare. The Hero as Priest, Martin Luther and John Knox, and how they influenced the creation of new churches in England. The Hero as Man of Letters, Samuel Johnson, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and the hero as king, Cromwell and Napoleon. Each of these works obviously represents yet another argument to support his theory that society always waits for great men to appear in order for them to light the flames in the hearts of the many and move people towards change. Oh, ever the epic he was. Anyways, it's important to note that unlike Aristotle, who was an inspiration for Carlyle's works, Thomas Carlyle did not idealize the hero. He believed that, while great heroes are the centerpiece for progress, they also make mistakes, and those mistakes should be studied closely as well. But there are some issues. And obviously, there were some critics in those days that were quick to jump on them and write some good pieces in the Gazette. The most forceful critic is Herbert Spencer, a 19th century philosopher who stated that the genesis of a great man depends on a long series of complex influences which has produced the race in which he appears, and the social state into which the race has slowly grown. Before he can remake his society, his society must make him. So we're in a chicken and the egg kind of situation. What do you think? Does man make society or does society make man? Write a comment below and let us know. Until next time!